When it comes to cool villains, Adventure Time is more than its fair share. And I don't just mean the Ice King. The show is littered with villains like Meemaw, Lemon Grab, Hunts and Abadir, Gumbald, just to name a few, all wickedly wonderful in their own way. But one villain stands alone as easily the most evil, and even dubbed as one of the most terrifying villains in all of animation, the Lich. An ancient, enigmatic, and extremely powerful spirit who's hell-bent on destroying life as we know it. Think of him as more of a force of nature than a villain. The mysterious being captured the imaginations of Adventure Time fans, and with a powerhouse performance from actor Ron Perlman, all the ingredients were there to create one of the most memorable villains in media. Fall. The beauty of the Lich is that you always want to know more, and so today. Hopefully, I can satisfy your cartoon cravings as we're about to go on a deep dive through the Lich's lore from beginning to end. Fair warning, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers for both the original series and the more recent Fiona and Cake spinoff, so if you care, get caught up. But with that covered, let's get on with the show. A very, very long time ago, when dinosaurs still walked the Earth, a mysterious but unbelievably dangerous comet was plummeting towards the Earth, known as the Catalyst Comet. What made this comet interesting is that it contained the pure essence of what it would become, the Lich. At the time, the four basic elementals, candy, ice, fire, and slime, feared for their safety of their planet, and they were trying to come up with a way to destroy the comet. The ice elemental, Urgence Evergreen, thought creating a mystically powerful crown, which would grant its user their deepest wish, would be able to stop the comet in its tracks. However, the other elementals had other ideas, as they deemed Evergreen's idea far too dangerous, so dangerous that it could do irreparable damage to the fabric of their universe. But a misplaced wish could cause irreversible damage to the very structure of existence. But despite his fellow elemental's fears, Evergreen was in no doubt that his plan would work, being so convinced that he'd be successful that he decided to freeze his opposers in place and get to work to put his plan into action. With Gunter, his dinosaur assistant by his side, Urgence Evergreen set out on a quest to find the ruby eyes of an ancient lava dog called Magwood, the eyes being a perfect power source for the crown. However, things took a turn, as while the two were just about to snatch the eyes for themselves, Magwood awakened. Though eventually, Evergreen steals the eyes and does indeed create the crown, Magwood returns at the worst possible moment to get even with the person that stole his prized possessions. Oh, wow. Did you see that? Evergreen's quarters are destroyed, and he's displaced far away from the crown, right as the comet is about to strike. The only person who's near the crown is Gunter. But just as the elementals foretold, all was not 100% with Evergreen's crown, as it can only achieve its host's deepest desire. And in this case, its host wanted to be just like their master. Gunter is transformed into a miniature version of his master, as Evergreen is left to watch the planet go into oblivion, wiping out the dinosaurs and most of life on the planet's surface. Centuries pass, and despite the Lich's essence being present, it lays dormant. Well, until the Great Mushroom War, that is. A war that involved countless nuclear strikes between a whole host of countries, which ended with a gigantic mutagenic bomb being dropped over what used to be North America. A bomb which wakes the Lich and allows him to manifest in a physical body. Side note, this war is also how we get to Ooh as we know it. You know, all the wonderful creatures being a result of the countless nuclear strikes. Anyway, back to the Lich. Throughout the next millennium, the Lich hides away, studying the ways of Galb, one of the most evil entities in existence, who embodies discord and chaos. This is where the Lich picks up his nickname as the Last Scholar of Galb, basically being so captivated by the chaos of Galb that he too wants to be seen as a beacon of of true evil. Things didn't quite go to plan for the Lich, though, as he soon clashes with a legendary hero of Ooh named Billy. <laughs> who defeats him and imprisons him in amber, locking him away in a giant tree in the Candy Kingdom. And this was all before the time of Finn and Jake. Side note, what a name for a legendary hero. Also, I heard the guy fought a bear. Anyway, Finn and Jake's time with the Lich was fast approaching, as in the season two episode titled Mortal Folly, they finally have their first encounter with the last scholar of Galb. While meditating with Princess Bubblegum, Finn and Jake witness PB receiving a dark vision. This vision resembles the Lich. Fearing her dark thoughts, PB takes the boy 
boys to see the Lich, but warns of his power. He's so powerful that the three have to wear special gems when they're around him to prevent him possessing the pair. As PB gives Finn and Jake a quick tale on the origins of the Lich, a wandering snail has accompanied them without protection. The snail is quickly ensnared by the powerful being and given the task of breaking the Lich's amber prison, which it does, freeing him. The duo try to stop the Lich in his tracks, but the last scholar of Galb gets the last laugh as he flees the scene. His next stop is his ancient lair, where a well of power awaits him to rediscover his true strength. PB knows how dangerous this is and decides to bestow the gauntlet that Billy used to defeat and imprison the Lich to Finn and Jake, hoping they too can use it to defeat the all-powerful Lich. The duo set a course for the Lich, but have to deal with an annoying Ice King who distracts the pair and even kidnaps the princess. The Ice King's shenanigans distracts Finn and Jake just enough to allow the Lich to release hundreds of souls as protection to his lair. Finn and Jake fight their way through the evil undead, blowing a hole into the ground, revealing a balcony which the duo can watch the Lich leering over his well of power, which is being further powered by a leaking toxic waste pipe. Finn launches an attack on the unsuspecting Lich, but with the Lich now being more powerful than he was in the past, he makes short work of Finn, turning the gauntlet to dust. In the process, Finn's protective gem breaks, allowing the Lich to leech into his head, forcing Finn to walk into the well of pure power. But thankfully, due to Finn's strong will, he can't be fully controlled, so the Lich decides to dispose of him instead. But just like his mind-controlling trick, his flames do no damage to Finn. This is because of Finn's sweater that PB gave him, which has the power of pure love. The Lich's one true weakness. Knowing this, Finn sparks into action once again, using the sweater as a weapon as he pulls it through the Lich's eyes like dental floss until he collapses into dust. Brutal! But as soon as things finally seem to have gone back to normal, the Ice King appears and drops PB into the well of the Lich's power. The next episode, titled Mortal Recoil, picks up where the last episode left off and follows PB's recovery after she was dropped into the well. Things seem fine at first, but that's far from the truth. PB, now infused with the essence of the Lich, starts to act crazy. <laughs> She transforms into a monster hybrid which is as tall as her castle, forcing her gumball guardians to fight against her. Not long after, the Ice King appears to tell Finn and Jake that he saw the Lich possess PB, when in the well thanks to his wizard eyes, which is met, as you'd imagine, with anger. Finn and Jake refuse the help of the Ice King, but soon accept after the mutant PB attacks Jake. Ice King fights on the side of good and manages to freeze PB in her tracks, but the now frozen princess falls over and smashes into pieces. Things look hopeless. But thanks to Dr. Ice Cream, PB pulls through. But due to a lack of gum to put her back together, she's now 13 again. Behind the scenes, unknown to our duo and PB, the Lich lives on in the form of the wandering snail that we saw earlier. The malevolent mollusk lies in wait, which he does really for most of season 3 and 4, until the season 4 finale aptly titled The Lich. The episode opens with Finn having a nightmare about the snail Lich attacking Billy, which scares him into waking up. Finn, knowing the Lich's untold power, feels that his nightmare might have been more of a premonition dream, that the Lich is seeking revenge on the legendary warrior. The duo track down Billy. Billy, wake up! <gasps> What the heck are you guys doing in my crack? And warn him of Finn's dream. Billy listens to their worries and suggests that they collect the various crystals from Ooze princesses, and even the crystals from the Ice King's crown, so that the trio can fully power the Enchiridion. Which, as you guys probably know, was the hero's guidebook given to Finn back in season one. When fully powered, the book can open a gateway to the multiverse, into the time room dimension, which is the domain of Prismo, the Wishmaster. Billy's plan is that if they conceal the Lich in these in-between worlds, then he can no longer do any damage to life, and will be trapped in a dimension where his power is significantly weaker. The plan runs smoothly, until the very last crystal is needed, PB's crown crystal. She refuses to hand over the gem to the pair, who plead with her, and eventually end up taking the gem by force. But as Finn and Jake flee, PB shouts a warning that Billy is actually the Lich. Finn, stop! That's not Billy, it's the Lich! Huh? When a gumball guardian notices Billy at the edge of the candy forest waiting for Finn and Jake, and then blasts Billy under orders from PB. This blast shaves half of Billy's face off, revealing the Lich. Just as PB warned, it seems Finn's dream was right after all. With a fully powered Enchiridion close by, the Lich is desperate for it, and attempts to manipulate Finn into giving it to him, even offering him immortality should he cooperate. The book. 
give me the book. Finn refuses, and decides the only safe way to prevent the Lich from infecting the multiverse is to destroy the Enchiridion. But instead of it being destroyed, that actually activates it, and opens up the gateway to Prismo's world. And without missing a beat, the Lich dives in. Finn and Jake desperately cling onto him, trying to pull him back into their dimension, but the pull is far too strong, and they get pulled into the otherworldly dimension as well. The season 5 premiere, titled Finn the Human, starts with the pair still chasing the Lich in Prismo's dimension, but as they're just about to catch up to him inside Prismo's cube, it's revealed the Lich wished for the extinction of all life. Yeah, he wished for the extinction of all life, and I did it. I guess it changed his timeline or something. What? Oh, Glob! And as his name suggests, the Wishmaster, Prismo granted his wish. Thinking fast, in order to undo the Lich's wish, Finn wishes that the Lich had never existed, which also gets granted. This is how the farm world universe was born. Basically, in the absence of the Lich, if you remember from earlier on, I mentioned that whilst his essence was on the planet, it needed a mutagenic explosion to release him. Well, in this universe, the Ice King, or Simon Petrikov, uses the might of the magic crown to stop the mutagenic bomb, meaning we never actually get to the land of Ooh. But this universe is far from perfect either, and Finn has to deal with a whole host of new problems, like the Destiny Gang. These troublemakers drive Finn to use the magical crown on himself in order to save his family, and to rid his home of the Destiny Gang, which he does. But the power of the crown is so strong in comparison to him that he loses control and unintentionally detonates the dormant bomb, and brings the essence of the Lich to life once again. The Lich finds form through the Farm World Universe version of Jake. But back in Prismo's dimension, the real Jake has been chilling in a hot tub while all the craziness was going down. Finally, though, he notices the commotion in the Farm World Universe and wishes for Finn to be safe. Make Finn okay! I wish for safe Finn! But Prismo warns him of wishing so haphazardly, as after having spent time with Jake, the cosmic being has grown fond of him. Prismo instructs Jake to change his wish, to instead wish for the Lich's original wish, to be for Finn and Jake to get back home safely. This rips the Lich from the Farm World universe, and drops him back into Prismo's prism, in which he can't believe he's been beaten again. So once again, the Lich decides to wait. Until the opening episode to season 6, titled Wake Up, where it's revealed that the Lich is still in Prismo's dimension, but for all this time has remained in a paralyzed state. Meanwhile, Jake and Finn chat about the news that Finn's dad, Martin Mertens, is actually alive. Dude, I found out my human dad is still alive. But the only problem is that he's located in a place known as the Citadel. Not knowing where this is, Finn and Jake go back to Prismo to wish their way to finding Finn's dad. But Prismo warns the pair and tells them that the Citadel is a cosmic prison. You guys do not want to go there. Seriously. Meaning the only way you can get into it is by committing a cosmic crime. But as we know from the last time we saw Prismo, he has a sweet spot for Finn and Jake. So sets them up to commit the perfect crime. Waking up the old man whose slumber is responsible for Prismo's existence. The duo don't really want to stop their friend from existing, but Prismo explains it's the only way. Or it was, as the Lich suddenly springs into action, knocking Finn and Jake away and claiming Prismo's guardian for himself. The Lich destroys Prismo, and his guardian in a fit of revenge for not granting him his wish to destroy all life. But before the Lich can do anything, he's frozen in place and imprisoned by a Citadel guardian. Like Prismo said, this was a crime that would get Finn and Jake into the Citadel. So the determined duo grab onto the frozen Lich and are carried away to the Citadel. The next episode, titled Escape from the Citadel, pretty much centers more around Finn and his dad, but the Lich still manages to make himself known. The power of the Lich is so strong, as even when imprisoned, he can not only free himself, but other prisoners too. The Lich, now free, finally sheds the skin of Billy, and his true form is revealed once more, and tells Finn and Jake that with his new army of prisoners, he'll travel to billions of worlds, until the universe falls dark at his mighty hand. He reaches out to touch Finn in his hypnotic, dreamlike spell and just as he's about to eliminate Finn, Finn splashes him with Citadel Guardian blood. This blood has magical properties, which regrows muscle and skin. The Lich, now infected, screams with pain as Finn throws more and more of this blood on him until he transforms into a giant baby. This, of course, is the birth of Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea soon gets dropped off at Tree Trunk's house, as after all, he's only a baby. And this is where the Lich pretty much remains for the rest of the series, dormant inside the body of a huge baby. Sweet Pea is a character in his own right, who has nothing really to do with the Lich. That all changed in the season six episode, Gold Stars, where the King of Wu and his friend Toronto borderline bully Sweet Pea to the point that the 
glitch resurfaces and reminds them about the past, possessing both the king and his friend to the point that he has them screaming for their lives. But the lich never fully takes hold, and Sweet Pea's outbursts are usually put down to being bad dreams. The lich makes his next appearance in the season 7 episode, Crossover. Well, not our lich, but the farm world Jake hybrid that I talked about earlier, as yes, that entire universe has still been unfolding alongside the land of Ooh. Basically, the Jake lich did the same thing that our lich did, asking farm world Finn to collect crystals to power the Enchiridion to destroy all life once more. Prismo's back, and sends original Finn and Jake to the farm world universe to fix its reality. But they also have to deal with a corrupted farm world Finn with ice powers thanks to the magic crown. The lich reveals his true plan to farm world Finn, saying that he and his family will die over and over and over again in infinite universes at the hand of the lich. You, your family, everyone will die. Soon, after he tries to infect original Jake with his essence, but Finn's grass sword activates, chopping the lich's arm off, freeing his friend. But the lich's slashed hand falls into the open multiverse portal and appears in every universe in existence. Luckily though, Prismo has given Finn a device to destroy the body of the farm world lich, which he uses to full effect. However, the hand of the farm world lich lives on in the show's main universe, where it travels around in search of Sweet Pea. This brings us all the way to season 9 in the episode with Whispers, where the Hand hopes it can join forces with Sweet Pea to awaken the real Lich. Sweet Pea notices the Hand nearby, and decides to run away from his home in a blind panic, until he bumps into Finn and Fern, who notice how upset he is, and the two try to calm him down. The three boys decide it's best if they stick together, and spend the night camping so Sweet Pea can have some protection from the dangerous Lich Hand. But… The Hand soon finds where the boys are camping, and waits for them to sleep before whispering into Sweet Pea's ear trying to warp his mind and control him. Finn notices the Lich Hand and chases it to the same lair the original Lich used for his Well of Power. The Hand sneaks up on Finn and tries to push him into the pit, but quick reflexes from our hero keeps him out of harm's way. Sweet Pea approaches, and for a split second, it seems like he's about to join the Lich Hand, but he turns on the Hand, smiting it with Finn's sword and ridding the Land of Vu from the Lich. Well, the farm world version anyway. The Lich's final appearance in Adventure Time was in the Distant Land special, Together Again, where it's revealed another other farm world Jake Lich hybrid hand is now known as New Death, King of the Dead Worlds. It's not been 100% confirmed, but there's a bit of a debate as to if this hand is the one that spawned out of when the hybrid hand dropped in the Enchiridion portal, or whether this hand is the hand we saw Sweet Pea kill, as well, it technically wouldn't have gone to the Dead World after. But yeah, back to the Lich. The Lich hand commands New Death to destroy already existing Dead Worlds, as this prevents souls from reincarnating. But a dead Mr. Fox then used a Kiss of Life object to bring New death down. Does this sound insane? I feel like I sound completely insane right now. But you know, the Lich doesn't stop there. The Hand tries to change its host by manipulating Mr. Fox until Jake finally tosses the Lich's old appendage into the pure darkness of the underworld. And that was the last time Finn, Jake, and us all saw the Lich. But not the last time he appeared in their universe, as in the spin-off series Fiona and Cake, the Lich makes his presence felt once more. During their traversal of the multiverse, Fiona Cake and Simon Petrikov stumbled into a universe where the Lich's original wish had come true, and all life ceased to exist. The Lich also presents in Billy's body, which leads us to believe that maybe this Lich is the same Lich we saw disappear into Prismo's dimension all that time ago. The real OG Evil King. Now, overwhelmingly successful, it seems this Lich is borderline depressed, with zero purpose. I lost all purpose and lets Simon use his body as a battery to power a spell to get Fiona and Cake to get back to their world. However, Simon, the Lich, and the Scarab accidentally get transported to Galb's dimension, where the Lich complains to Galb about his lack of motivation in the world now that he's succeeded. But the work is never done to Galb's mind, so for his defiance and waywardness, Galb transforms the Lich into one of the blocks that surrounds the God of Chaos's head. And that is the real last time we saw the Lich. What an ending. Just turn turned into a block. Wow. The character of the Lich really does have this incredible potential, and can be brought back at any time for any reason. It's clear to see why so many people hope we haven't seen the last of this character, with just how menacing the guy came off in only a few episodes. I gotta say, I myself am really looking forward to watching season 2 of Fiona and Cake to see if the decrepit monster man makes his way back to the land of the living one last time. As always, thank you all so much for watching, let us know down below what your favorite lich moment is and what you do with the character next. Also, if you've got a suggestion for another character for us to cover in a video just like this one, then let us know too. But for now, we will see you all next time.